it's so scarce. Water, water on this planet. Water covers 70% of the globe, yet only 3% is fit to drink. Supplies of fresh water are not increasing, they're dwindling. Without water, you wouldn't have life on Earth. To bring water where we need it, engineers are moving heaven and Earth. You tell them that you work underground, their jaws drop. They carve a pair of tunnels through a mountain of granite. They manufacture a river a thousand miles long. They build a floating dam to save a sinking Venice. They tap ancient secrets to find water in the desert. They even make water from thin air. One day, awesome engineering could flow from the tap in your home. A tidal wave of ingenuity for a thirsty world. Vancouver is drowning in a paradox. Plenty of water, none of it drinkable. This guy holds the solution. 4.30 in the morning, I get up, come to work, throw on my gear here for the rest of the day, ready to rock. Ben works in one of the world's deepest mine shafts. Whenever you guys are ready, yeah, good to go. Okay, about a year and a half ago, we started sinking the shaft. It's 40 feet wide, 680 feet deep. Away you go. I said to myself when I was 16 years old, I'd never work in an office. This is about the closest to an office I'll ever get. You wouldn't believe how interested people are when you tell them that you work underground, their jaws drop. There's a mine in Vancouver? Yeah. Whereabouts? Just above the college. Didn't even know it was there, that's the whole idea. This is the Seymour Capilano Tunnel Project. Two giant tunnels excavated through 4.5 miles of rock. Designed to solve a problem unique to this city. Vancouver is floating in water. Together, its reservoirs could fill 2,000 Olympic pools. Yet sediments in the bedrock make it cloudy and undrinkable. I don't drink the water at home. I always buy bottled water. It would be nice to be able to turn on the tap and have a glass of water. Solution? Build one of the world's largest filtration plants. It's already connected to the Seymour Reservoir via a pipeline along the surface, but Vancouver's tallest mountain blocks the way to the Capilano Reservoir. Solution? Dig. One tunnel to supply the plant with untreated water, the other to carry clean water to the city. Together they formed the largest tunneling project in Canada's history. Engineers will have to bore through 4.5 miles of Grouse Mountain and 2 billion tons of granite. 
Only one piece of equipment can do the job. The Tunnel Boring Machine, or TBM. A giant drill with 26 steel blades, spaced around a head 13 feet wide. It can tunnel through 10 feet of rock every hour. Four giant electric motors spin the drill head 13 times a minute, cutting through rock like a knife through butter. The same machine dug the tunnel under the English Channel. It churns out 70 tons of rock every hour. It all heads towards Ben Spagnut at the entrance shaft. It's his job to empty the muck carts and convey the rubble to the surface. So what happens here, the muck train comes onto the tipping station. We'll dump the muck train into the muck bucket to head to surface via the gantry crane. Away we go. Four times an hour, the muck bucket rises to the surface, 700 feet above. The debris will end up as filler for Vancouver's highways. Waste not, want not. The Mammoth Project will take around 100 workers and approximately 2 million man-hours. But already, Ben can see light at the end of the tunnel. By 2010, all the citizens of Vancouver should have bottled water quality from their tap. Instead of having crappy water coming out of the tap, it should be fairly decent water to drink. The Seymour Capilano project is more than miles of tunnel. It's a measure of how far we'll go to keep a city from dying of thirst. When the tunnels are complete, Vancouver's thirst will be slaked. But more than 5,000 miles away, a megacity is running dry.